So just up next we've got Nancy Van Nievenhoven. Um, Nancy teaches biology and manages Mon Eco at Monash University. She's passionate about designing and delivering innovative science educational tools. And with Mon Eco, she promotes interdisciplinary co collaboration towards biodiversity protection. Her research foci include ecology, conservation, and teaching and learning practice. And I'm sure. Okay, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the Monash Eco Campus app. So this application will provide information about all those spaces and different species on a local scale. So this application can be used by, for, for learning purposes, for research or ground management. Unfortunately, Jerry Rayner, my colleague, couldn't be here today, but uh, I'm sure it would have been lovely to have, to have it here. Um, so first of all, to be able to talk to you about the Monash Eco Campus app, I will need to talk to you about the Monash Clayton Campus, where basically that's all study sites. So the Monash Clayton Campus was created in 1958, and during that time, you can see, there was not a lot around, so a lot of open spaces. Today, the Monash Clayton Campus is much more complex with a lot of micro habitats, a lot of little gardens and spaces, and basically lots of potential resources for learning about biodiversity. Unfortunately, that's what we have actually. The map that we have often from campuses are maps like this with a lot of information about the different buildings, about the different uh, car, uh, car park uh, spaces, but not a lot of information about the different gardens, reserves, water bodies, nest box, and so on. Uh, one big problem that I noticed uh, being a TA um, at Monash University is that a lot of students don't really know where and what sort of species are available on campus. So an example is that in environmental biology, our students have to investigate um, the, um, the impact of climate change on plant species, animal species, or fungi species. So seeing if uh, the species is going to breed earlier or later in the year, or is going to flower earlier or later in the year. And basically, they don't know where the species are. And they are going to tell us, okay, Nancy, I have to go uh, very far away to go and uh, monitor my species. So, and there is also the, the difficulty of identifying the species properly. So is that knowledge available somewhere? Yes, that knowledge is available, actually. That knowledge is available on our websites. So we have building and property division at uh, Monash University, which actually uh, has a map of all the tree species on campus. We have more than 9,000 uh, individual trees, and across that, 220 different species, just for the uh, trees. We have information about, uh, our, about the species as well on our website, and we have information on databases, general database, national database, like Atlas of Living Australia, or you have Climate Watch data as well available. So basically, a little bit citizen science data is also available. Data about uh, the different habitats is also available on the websites and across people. So be people know about where all the species are. They will say to me, oh, Nancy, I saw actually a gala uh, in that uh, tree hollow. Or uh, have you seen actually some... Um, like long neck turtle in the Jock Marshall Reserve. So some people know, some other people don't know. Knowledge is available inside Monash um, uh, databases, and we have knowledge as well uh, in big national databases. So what we decided is to combine all this knowledge into a single tool that will actually allow anyone to identify and locate animal species, plant species, and fungi species on a very localized area. So it's just at the moment on the Monash Clayton campus. Um, and basically people will have that data, but not only. So we decide we want to reach out a little bit and have actually other knowledge uh, spread uh, across with, via that. And knowledge about like um, Aboriginal knowledge. So a lot of people might want to know about Aboriginal knowledge. There will be allergenicity of plant species. If the species creates a fever or contact dermatitis, there will be knowledge about uh, which kind of uh, nest box we have been putting on, on campus. So basically, if anyone wants actually to share data with the broader community, so the, all the data that will be sent with Monaco will be sent to Atlas of Living Australia, basically. And so all the data will have a sort of history. So, oh, we have seen actually a rosella in the possum box, or vice versa. Or we have seen actually a dead, I don't know, 
species next to the water. And we have seen actually that the quality of water was at ta da da because there will be this knowledge, because we have as well some uh, information about the different monitoring devices on campus. So we have weather station, water station, acoustic recorder, and different camera. So that is how Monaco looks like. So it's a little bit like Pokemon Go. So basically you take your, your phone. Sorry for the people that don't have phone. I, I wish I, I found a solution <laughs> for that. Um, so basically when you walk, basically it tells you whatever species is around you, if it's a plant species, an animal species, or a fungi species. You have another uh, technique which is uh, with the two hectare grids. So if you have 20 minutes at lunchtime, you can sit wherever you want or be uh, wherever you want and discover actually what uh, species have been previously in, seen in that two hectare cell. So animal species, uh, um, plant species, and there will always be a date linked with that because of course there might have been like Wallaby on campus, we don't have them anymore. Uh, there will be, you can do quick search by common name, scientific name, you can have a display of all the data, um, you can search your area, and you can get information about the different species. <coughs> there will be also in the future, th so that's, the, it's still going, this project, so the report of sightings, so there will be single sighting, multiple sighting, that's for the two hectare, two hectare grids, and you can actually do a single sighting, for example, for three species, Instead of doing a new sighting, you click on the data point and you say this tree is flooring. So it avoids actually duplicate of data. And so here we have uh, those, uh, those data and basically what we uh, also want to do is make um, any student staff or the broader community be actually enjoying our Monash Clayton campus. And so we bring on campus external collaborator, which is great. That's that's all the idea of citizen science, Melbourne Water, BirdLife Australia, and basically to collect new data and share that with the broader community. Just as a little tips, this tree is a eucalyptus platypus. Just uh, I discovered that uh, uh, recently. Uh, so I'd like to thank anybody involved in this project and I will be happy uh, to uh, discuss anything with you guys.